Good evening, good morning. Welcome to week three of PSSL 6240, Political Violence and Terrorism, here at George Washington University Safety and Security Leadership Program. Uh, just start off with a couple of announcements. Uh, Adobe Connect session, again, this Thursday, Mar May 14th, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the group that's going will... Uh, uh, send me your slides beforehand so I can go ahead and, and post it up and hopefully after this week you have a better idea of your topic and how you kind of want to narrow it down and hopefully after this this YouTube lecture you'll have a, a pretty good idea uh, paper one is due for so for the rest of you paper one is due on next Sunday uh, hopefully if you're in the Adobe Connect session you can get some ideas last-minute ideas to, to add on to your paper uh, I will send out an example uh, with this YouTube video of what I'm looking for in the paper. So make sure you uh, you look at that, you follow it, and you, you, you take the guidance there and apply it to your paper. Uh, I'm not going to be too uh, generous with any extensions. If there's any medical issues or family issues, let me know. Uh, but I, I can't really slide on the due dates too much, again, unless there's a, a pretty big issue. So, uh, again, paper one is due not this Sunday or today as you're watching this, but next Sunday. <coughs> so, excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. So, paper example, um, go ahead and pause this YouTube and look at the paper example that I will send in the uh, in this email. So, go ahead and pause it and just take a look at that uh, so you have an idea of what you're looking for. So, now that you've come back, um, just as you saw in that paper, there's argument points for each topic that you choose, or for whatever topic you want to choose, and that's how I want your your paper to be. I want you to pin those argument points uh, to justify whether this group is terrorist, or this action is terrorist, or is not terrorist, um, and, and go along with that. I just want to give some, some advice on the paper that uh, you can use the examples we talked about in the discussion board, Fort Hood, Dresden, Hiroshima, USS Cole. But if you come up with something original and out, outside the box, a group we haven't talked about in class or an event that we haven't talked about, uh, I will look more kindly on that because you're bringing in something from the outside. So I just want to make sure that's, that's clear. But for argument points, um, again, things that we've talked about that you've brought up in your discussion sections. Military versus non-military. Uh, some people said Fort Hood shooting was terrorism. Others said no because it was... It was a target, a military target. Uh, what's the, again, so I bring up the difference. What's the difference between Fort Hood and an IED attack in Iraq? Uh, or what's the difference between soldiers essentially prepping to go to war, which is what they were doing at Fort Hood, and actually being in, an, in a war zone itself? Uh, so that's kind of an argument that you can make, whether you're, you're making it in of itself or applying it with another group. A state versus non-state. And again, a lot of people said a non-state, in order for terrorism to be, it has to be a non-state actor. Um, we'll let, you know, you can make that, that argument, or you can make the argument that a state-based uh, terrorist uh, can happen as well. Or you can make the argument that if it's an actions by a state, it's not terrorism, like a lot of you made when talking about Dresden or Hiroshima. Again, some, some points to consider, you know, Go one way or another, but something that you can tie your argument to. Within versus outside the locus of conflict. Uh, you saw two movies, uh, two short clips about the Urgoon and operating outside or inside the locus of conflict. So if they had uh, a uh, an attack within their locus of conflict, that may be one thing. If they started to, if the Urgoon or the Urgoon started to attack in London, or the FLN started to talk and attack in Paris, maybe they're no longer freedom fighters trying to fight for their independence. Maybe that's the Rubicon that says you're now a terrorist organization. Uh, again, something to consider. Uh, apparatus of government versus civilians. Um, this is another argument point for terrorism that you guys have brought up. Um, Nelson Mandela focused his violence or his planned violence against the apparatus of oppression. Uh, the FLN focused their uh, violence, the majority of their violence, against the apparatus of government. 
Is that more legitimate than, say, randomly killing civilians uh, like the FLN did in Algeria? I should say the Urgun focused on the apparatus of government. The FLN focused against civilians. Uh, is that the, the tipping point for what might be a legitimate form of violence versus terrorism? Uh, war zone versus non-war zone. And this came up in the Fort Hood. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people said that Fort Hood was not a war zone, therefore it wasn't terrorism. That's what separates it from an IED in Iraq. Uh, legitimate point, but then what's who defines the war zone? Uh, the USS Cole was in a war zone for us in the United States, but if you're a guy in Yemen uh, and a ship rolls up into your village, uh, that or a warship rolls up into your village, you, that might be a war zone for you. Uh, you know, it's convenient for us to be a war zone in Baghdad where we have our troops and our guns. Not so convenient for us to be a war zone at Fort Hood, Texas, even though that's uh, a place where the enemy could target. So, again, another point to consider. Political narrative versus criminal event. And this was brought up, okay, what separates Fort Hood from uh, Aurora, Colorado, or Columbine, or those shootings in Connecticut? or pick any other mass shootings that we've had in the past few months. Uh, argument is that Fort Hood had a political narrative to it, the, the anti or the jihadist narrative, while the other ones seem to be a little bit more random. Um, I'll let you decide. Someone could say, hey, that guy who shot up that, that school in Newtown, Connecticut, he had a political narrative. I don't know how you want to, uh, well, how you want to couch out in your paper is, again, up to you. Politically popular versus non-popular. Again, one of the arguments could be said that if you conduct violence uh, in the in a politically popular area, that's more, and it's it's politically popular for that violence, then that more reflects an insurgency than a terrorist act. Um, I'll let you decide on that and we decide what's politically popular and if it's politically popular, does that make violence okay? Uh, and again, these are all facets that you can uh, bring into your paper or bring in other ones that are, are more applicable. So as you saw in the paper, uh, the, the argument I want is kind of the, or broken down into these four sections. An intro argument, again, with those thesis points or those argument points I brought up. Rebuttal, anticipate the rebuttal, anticipate the counter argument someone's going to bring up. And then policy recommendations if there are any. Uh, make sure that, again, your paper has those that kind of structure uh, to it. Um, and again, you kind of saw that in your in the in the previous example. I didn't have policy recommendations in that one, but you know, if there are policy recommendations, go ahead and, and bring those up. So, kind of examples. Again, I, I covered this, but I just want to uh, to maybe one or go over it again in a little bit more detail. So, the Urgun. Highly oppressed, so if you're highly oppressed, you're probably less likely to be considered a terrorist group. Focused on the government, as we mentioned, on the apparatus of government within the locus of conflict. So if you're going to make the argument, and I kind of do in that paper, you know, the Urgun is not a terrorist organization because they face those factors. Now, again, you can reasonable people can make the debate on the other side, uh, but those are just kind of some facets to think of. FLN, and you guys saw the video, highly oppressed, focused on civilians, but still within the locus of conflict. So I'll let you decide, does the fact that the FLN primarily, and they did some pretty nasty, nasty things to civilians, uh, but they probably pri primarily focused that within the locus of conflict, does that make it a terrorist organization? I'll let you decide. And then finally, Al-Qaeda, again, I think most people will be clear on this, uh, not really oppressed, certainly Osama bin Laden and his cohort was not focused almost exclusively on civilians and certainly outside the locus of conflict. So, uh, you know, that might be on the spectrum, you know, Urgun might be on one side, Al-Qaeda might be on the other as far as all those facets of terrorism that we, we discussed. So I hope that's kind of clear as day. Um, if not, please let me know. And if, you know, the group that's presenting wants to run a topic by me, please please let me know as well. Um, I'm always here, open to hearing about it, maybe even uh, helping you along with, uh, with that project. 
So, preview of next week, Road to 9-11. Uh, if you don't have a DVD, the YouTube videos are broken up uh, on YouTube, so you can, you can view it that way. Excellent, excellent, excellent documentary. Uh, in fact, watch it twice. Um, it's, fr it's certainly a family-friendly documentary, so you can watch it with your, your significant other if you have one or your kids. Uh, but it goes into the political, social, cultural, economic, religious causes for 9-11. And that's what I want you to think about when you're going uh, through, this, uh, through this section. Uh, do the causes of 9-11, are they entrenched, deeply entrenched in history of dozens, hundreds of years? Or is it something that's kind of more of a constructivist recent phenomenon? And when we're talking about 9-11, we're not talking about just the event of 9-11. But if you remember, if you were uh, old enough to remember back then, you had widespread, I don't want to say joy, but celebrations in some parts of the Arab world. And the question is why? Why were people celebrating the deaths of 3,000 Americans? And you could almost apply that, take that logic, especially when you see the video, to now, to ISIS. Why does ISIS seem to have the appeal that it does? Um, and, you know, the problems that we see in Syria and Iraq, you, you can see the, the roots in the video. Or I'll let you decide if those are the problems of ISIS. Um, so that's the, the first part is the road to 9 11. The second part is terrorism finance. It is a static PowerPoint slide. Excellent topic. Uh, and you'll, you'll see the readings and the PowerPoints as well. Uh, so I look forward to this week's discussion. And if there's any questions or issues for the paper, let me know. And if not, I will see you on Thursday.